I'm about a hair over six foot tall with my sweet corn here. It's tasseled out, it's gotten as tall as it's gonna get. Probably about six and a half foot tall, maybe seven foot tall in some spots. Got some nice looking tassels, got some silt formation here, got ears starting to form, and I wanna tell you all about it. So this here is my spring, early spring planting of sweet corn. This is a triple sweet variety called Avalon and uh, happy with it so far. Now the last time I showed you this corn plot, some of this over here on the end, which is a little shorter, wasn't looking as good. But we shot some 20-20-20 uh, through that drip tape there and um, got it turned around. It's looking a lot better now. All my leaves are nice and green here. Everything's looking good. Been able to keep plenty of water to it, although we've had some rain lately. And as uh, long as we don't ever see these leaves curling up like that, we know that plant's not stressed and that's gonna be best for that plant long term. So happy with how this plot of corn has turned out so far here and uh, really excited to try some of this white triple sweet corn because we've never grown this one before. Now as a little side note, here's that plot of temptress bicolor quad sweet corn we planted a couple videos ago and I need to get in there and thin that out. But I got a good stand there for the most part. I just need to get in there and thin those plants out to about one every four to six inches or so. Now back to this Avalon here. So really happy with how tall the plants got when they tasseled out. Now this isn't always the case or always the rule, but I like my plants, you know, to be six foot tall or so before they tassel. From my experience is that the plants are short when they tassel out, that means they didn't get some kind of nutrient along the way. Now, I've grown plenty good crops of sweet corn with plants like this that are about five foot tall, tasseled out, and these stalks right here will probably produce good ears as well. And sometimes it depends on variety. Some varieties are shorter than others. Some varieties will tassel out earlier than others. But this one here, seems to get on up about six or seven foot tall in ideal situations over there where it was better fed where i had dumped a little more compost uh, we got those nice tall plants back there now the only thing I, i'd like to see that i've done a little bit better i'd like to have a little thicker stalk down there those are probably uh, about the diameter of a quarter or so. I'd like to see a little bit wider or thicker stalk. And it probably had something to do with the fact I didn't heal them up a second time like I should have. After I healed them the first time with that high arch wheel hoe, we got a good rain. It kind of beat down my heel a little bit and corn shot up and it was just too tall to heal again with a wheel hoe. And I probably should have came in here with a rake and healed them up one more time. That would have made a little stronger root system and maybe some thicker stalks. But, you know, considering that, still pretty happy with everything, how green everything is and the timing of the tassel formation and the silk formation there. You see what can happen, and I know this because it's happened to me, is if your corn plants aren't well fed, well fertilized, and well watered, the timing of your tassel formation and your silt formation can be off. And that's gonna affect your pollination, which is gonna affect your eventual harvest. It don't matter how healthy those corn plants look, if you don't get good pollination, you're just not gonna get good ears of corn. So we always like to keep an eye on our tassel formation and our silk formation. If a corn tassels early and there's no silks down there to pollinate, then you're in trouble because all your pollen is going to be gone by the time your silts get there. So that timing is really important, which leads us into a little deeper discussion about corn pollination. So corn is wind pollinated, doesn't require any insects to pollinate it. And we have male and female flowers. So the male flower is what we call the tassel up here. And the pollen is on these little grains right here. And if we just shake this plant a little bit, I don't know if the camera resolution lets us see it, we can, should be able to see some dust kind of coming off there and that's all the pollen. There is tons of pollen on this one tassel here, more than enough to pollinate 
the ears of corn that are going to be on the stalk. So that's the male flower. And then down here, the silks, or what's going to you know, eventually become the ear, is the female flower. And each one of these silks here represents an individual kernel on that ear. So to get a nice full ear, we need every one of those silks to become pollinated. Now, some sweet corn varieties will have these kind of pinkish red silks. Some varieties won't. That's just a, a pigment called anthocyanin in there. You'll see that in some varieties there. But we wanna make sure we get good pollination so we get nice full ears. And that's why we always recommend planting at least three rows of corn side by side. And if you can, plant them in a square plot like this is going to give you better pollination. If you've just got one row there, you might get some decent pollination, but if the wind is just blowing one way, it could be blowing the pollen to the right or the left and not in the linear direction of the row, and you might not get as good a pollination. So that's why we always like to say plant it in a square plot and plant at least three rows side by side to get real good pollination. And you can kind of tell if everything's pollinating correctly because you can see those little grains off the tassels all over the corn leaves there. And if we look down here, we see them all over the ground there. So it looks like everything is pollinating pretty well. Now we get plenty of wind here. So as long as we got our corn, enough of it planted and planted in a relatively square plot, usually pollination is not a big issue. But if you live somewhere you're not getting a lot of wind or maybe you just planted one or two rows and you're worried about the pollination, I'll show you something you can do. Just take you a long pipe or a long stick or something and you can go through here and just kind of brush back and forth across some tassels there. And that's gonna make sure that pollen gets nice and scattered all over the place there. So that's a good little insurance policy if you're worried about your corn pollinating correctly. And when you start seeing those silks form there, that's when you need to start being on the lookout for any corn earworm damage and maybe even preventively treating any damage that could occur. Now, I haven't seen any signs of any worms chewing on these plants. Usually you can tell if that's happening pretty early when the plants are, you know, three, four foot tall, you'll see some nibbling on the leaves kind of down inside the curl where those new leaves are emerging. Also, sometimes if you got real bad corn earworm pressure, they can gnaw off these tassels right here, which means no pollination, and that's not good. Even though I haven't seen any damage yet, I know down here in the south we can get corn earworms, and so I always like to treat them. And the best thing to take care of corn earworms is this stuff here, our garden insect spray, which has spinosad in it. And spinosad works really good on corn earworms. The trick is you've got to spray the silks. That's where those earworms are going to get in there on that corn and start eating on them and leave that kind of nasty mess at the top of that ear. So you want to make sure you spray the silks. So what we do is we mix one to two ounces of this per gallon of water. We come in here with a little hand sprayer or a backpack sprayer and we just spray right along here around waist level where these silks are. We don't have to worry about spraying the entire plant, just where these silks are, where those worms are liable to be in there eating on your corn ears. Now we planted this corn here, to the best of my memory, around the middle of March. Here it is the end of May, and we're probably looking at about a couple more weeks before those ears are nice and full. So from middle of March, April, May, June, we're looking at about 90 days. So planting it in the early spring like this, it's gonna come off pretty true to the actual listed maturity date. Now this temptress quad sweet that needs thinning here, we planted it early to middle May, and it's gonna be a lot hotter for this corn than it was for that Avalon behind me here. And so this is probably gonna come off a lot faster. It may not get as tall, which would be all right. We kinda expect that when those heat units crank up on into the summer. So we'll just be sitting right here, waiting a couple more weeks for this white, triple sweet Avalon corn to get ready. I can't wait to try some. This is one of the things I look forward to kind of the beginning of summer is that sweet corn getting ready 
having some friends over doing a low country boil just you know eating it all up i'll eat corn three or four nights out of the week when this stuff gets ready i can't get enough of it and so when that does happen when it does get ready we'll be glad to show you what it looks like do a little taste test and see just how good it is so make sure your corn gets pollinated so you got them nice full ears make sure you feed it well make sure your timing's right and if you don't get a lot of wind grab you a stick and give it a little help i'll put some links below to both these corn varieties we talked about today and a link to that spinosad that you're going to need to take care of them corn earworms if you enjoyed this video give me a big thumbs up don't forget to hit that subscribe button and that bell button down below so you get notified every time we come out with a new video and check out these two videos right here i think you'll really enjoy those as well we'll see you next time